Welcome back to the show. It's time for Financial Freedom Minutes here on The Breakfast Show. And today we're asking you this. Mm -hmm. Do you know the status of your financial health? Yes. Are you asset rich or are you over leveraged? Mm -hmm. are, they're on different sides of the spectrum. Because this morning we'll continue to examine how financial ratios can be used to forecast any clues or symptoms of an underlying financial condition. Yes. Our resident financial advisor, Mr. Yap Wing Hui, elaborates. Over to you, Mr. Yap. Good morning. Thank you for your kind introduction. So today, I want to actually talk about this financial health ratio. How do we measure the financial health ratios? Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, last week, I talked about how do we prepare a uh, balance sheet. So this week, I I'm going to talk about how do we measure financial health using the balance sheet that you prepare. Okay. So in like med medical, we have got like this cholesterol level, we have got like glucose level and also high blood pressure level for us to know whether we are normal, uh, healthy or whether we are actually not healthy. So the same thing also come to money management. We also have got a few indicators that we can look at to know whether the way we manage money, okay, whether we are actually managing in a very healthy condition or we are now have signs that we need to actually look out for and take some action from today. So today I got three financial ratios to share with you that you can derive from your balance sheet. Number one is what I call basic liquidity ratio. So this ratio shows the number of the months that you could live, continue to meet your living expenses from your cash and cash equivalent asset after a loss of income. So in this case, for example, how many months that you can actually last, okay, without uh, comfortably, if there's actually unemployment and loss of income. How do you get basic liquidity ratio? Basically what you do is that you will divide cash and cash equivalent asset that you have on the balance sheet by the monthly expenses that you have. So if I take an example, if you have got 50,000 cash and cash equivalent asset divided by 5,000 monthly expenses you have, okay, then you will get a basic liquidity ratio of 10. Okay? Now, what is a healthy level here? The healthy level for basic liquidity ratio that we're supposed to be looking at should be six months. Okay? Now, why is it six months and what happens if like, you have 10 months? Now, if you have 10 months, it means that you will have extra cash that sitting there in the cash which do not generate enough income even to hedge against inflation. So, but what if you have less than six months? If you have less than six months, say for example, you only have one month or two months, then it means that should you were to be laid off Okay, or should you resign from the job, you lost the income, you only have one month to last yourself. So if you are not able to find a job within two months or three months, then you may not have income to take care of yourself. You may need to go into debt. So that's why I would suggest you to have not more, not less, but six months of your basic liquidity ratio. Next, we want to look at net investment to net worth ratio. This ratio basically shows how much of your net worth is being used to fund your work accumulation for the long-term financial goals like retirement, children education, and etc. So to get net investment to net worth ratio, what you do is that you divide net investment asset you have by the net worth that you have. So if I take an example, whereby someone who has got 700,000 net investment asset divided by 1 million net worth that he has. So this will give like 70% net investment to net worth ratio. Okay. So the healthy level for this ratio should be at least 50%. So if you have 70% like what I mentioned just now, that would be great. Otherwise, what if someone who has got less than 50%, say if someone who get only say 20% in the net investment to net worth ratio, what does it mean? It means uh, there's out of the total net worth that he has got 1 million, only 200,000 is used to fund the long-term wealth accumulation. 800,000 of it mainly come from his personal use asset. What does it mean by personal use asset? It means to say the house that he has, that he's staying in, not generating rental income, okay, and the capital appreciation also is not so relevant because you can't enjoy it anyway you're staying inside the house, or the car that you bought, and uh, yacht, you know, some people may have yacht, and some maybe have <coughs> some people may have actually retirement or weekend homes and things like that. So all this asset is a personal use asset which doesn't contribute much to your long term wealth accumulation. So uh, be aware of that. Now third uh, ratio that I want to share that you can use to measure your financial health 
is what we call debt to asset ratio. This ratio basically shows your solvency or your ability to pay debts. Okay. Now, this how do we get this ratio? Basically, what you do is to divide total debt that you have by the total asset you have. So, if I have example, someone who have got two hundred thousand debt, uh, one million asset, then we will get two hundred thousand divided by one million. They will add up, end up having twenty percent debt to asset ratio. Now, what is the healthy level here? As you can see from the screen, the healthy level for the debt to asset ratio should be always less than fifty percent. Now. Why is it important to have it always less than fifty percent? Imagine if someone have a debt to asset ratio of eighty percent. Now, when you have the eighty percent debt to asset ratio, which means to say you have very high ratio of debt. Now, in a situation whereby uh, the creditor may decide to actually withdraw the loan back to you, then you may need to sell some of your asset to settle the debt. But the fact that you only have a very little margin, twenty percent above the debt level that you have, when you for sale your asset, your asset may be actually sold at a very low price, maybe only seventy percent or sixty percent of your uh, this total actual value. So you may end up having negative and not enough asset to pay the debt. So and another reason also when you have debt to asset ratio so high, you may have difficulty servicing the loan when you have actually a loss of income or your reduced income. So I would suggest that we always keep the debt asset ratio less than fifty percent. So if you want, are interested to find out uh, the formula, the template, as how do you calculate all these uh, ratios, I would suggest you go to like, my website yangminghui dot com. You can go there to the homepage there to download the template, so you can do the calculation on your own. So this is what I have to share today. Be very watchful about your financial ratio. Don't just manage money like that, but always know where do you stand, so that whatever action you take will be more meaningful and more relevant to your own situation. So always remember, smarter you, smarter money management. So back to you, Joanne and. Thank nice. you, Mr. Yap. <laughs> thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, but you know, much. when you say asset rich, right? Mm. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean you're rich or mm. in an ideal financial situation because yes. there's also a cash flow that you need to, um, mm. you know, consider. Mm. Again, there, there are two things of it. I think when you are asset rich, like you say, mm. uh, it may not be very good uh, in a sense because when you have asset, there are people who got asset mm -hmm. that which actually like unit trust, mm. which. May not after invested may not generate the income or may not generate the kind of gain they are getting. Same thing on the share market. Instead of giving them dividends or capital yeah. gain, they may even lose money. Mm. Exactly. And another example of asset which is that you may have land, mm -hmm. you may have properties. Mm -hmm. But somehow, if you're not getting the rental, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you may be asset rich, mm -hmm. but, but you got no income. There's a lot of uh, of course the, the understanding out there. So if you own a house, everything is okay one because mm. even if you don't get rental in, you're staying in there. The uh, the capital gain. Gains will still be there. You know, you mm. still you sell your house at a higher value, so it's still considered uh, a very integral part of of your net investment. Mm. But uh, you said earlier that mm. uh, it might not be enough. Why is that? Okay, I think when we talk about just now uh, the the asset which is the one issue because mm -hmm. asset which is not enough, we don't make sure that we have income from there to mm -hmm. support our retirement. Mm -hmm. So that because when you have asset which And you are actively working. You got active income. There mm. shouldn't be too much issue because you have income to maintain your lifestyle. Exactly. But when you retire, your mm. asset rich, but you got no income. Mm -hmm. Then what you need to do? You need to sell off your asset. Exactly. Okay. So in the case of just talk, we talk about the house that we are just saying. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's important that I mean, as Malaysian, we like to own our own house, mm -hmm. so that we have to we don't have to pay renter. Exactly. Then we can take care of our own installment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is that some uh, people is that they may actually end up buying the house too big. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. when you end up buying a too big a house, you may when you calculate your high uh, your net worth ratio, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you may find your net worth actually is quite high. Say you may have one million net worth, mm -hmm. but if your house value is actually eight hundred thousand, then. Your net investment to net worth ratio is only twenty yeah, percent because eighty percent of it is in your house, mm -hmm. yeah. whereby you won't be collecting rental for yourself. Mm -hmm, <laughs> you won't mm -hmm. collect rental for your children and your wife. Exactly. <laughs> so you won't. And the capital appreciation, yes, the capital appreciation, but you can't enjoy it mm -hmm. because unless you sell it, you see. Yeah. So in this situation, when you evaluate that your net investment to net worth ratio is to be too low, mm -hmm. you no, know, then your asset is not going to support your retirement, children education goal. Mm -hmm. Then you may want to review to see whether you. Will 
will not stay in such a big house. Exactly. The other question, Mr. Yeah, now that you bring it up, is yes. that you know because a lot of us take housing loans. Mm. So would that eight hundred thousand mm. be also considered as part of your debt? Mm. Mm. Now, when we calculate net worth, uh, mm. okay, uh, that. Eight hundred thousand would mean the uh, full value of Total the property, value, yes. minus on minusing the loan. Mm -hmm. Right. So okay. it's a full value. Already. I see. Yes. I see. So you can count it as uh, you, you, you're part of yeah. your net worth. But just to clarify, also just now when I talk about net investment to net worth ratio, mm -hmm. when we calculate net investment again, mm -hmm. is net investment. Mm -hmm. So net investment come from the total investment asset you have on the balance sheet mm -hmm. divided by the corresponding debt that you have. I see. Say for example, you may have one piece of property. Uh -huh. For example, it's a, it's a shop. It may mm -hmm. worth one million. Mm -hmm. At the same time, you got five hundred thousand loan. Mm -hmm. Okay, for this particular shop uh, investment, one million. Mm -hmm. So the net investment for this piece of property mm -hmm. is one million minus one hundred thousand, which is. Only five hundred thousand. I see. So no, 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 no. That's the way okay. you're supposed to calculate it. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so of course yeah. you can get more guides on, of course, yapwinghui.com because he's so nice. He'll share with uh, his <laughs> tips on TV and on his website for free. Exactly. You can actually <laughs> also download this template mm -hmm. uh, that Mr. Yap was showing us earlier this morning. You can make your own calculations, mm -hmm. or if you'd like, you can send him an email. Mm -hmm. That uh, email address is enquiries at yapminghui.com. You can even send him an SMS, That's and right. that phone number is. 012-390-0048. Of course, you want to meet Mr. Yap Ming Hui, the financial guru personally. Of course, mm -hmm. he'll be organizing a two-day financial mastery workshop, 68 strategies to optimize your wealth. That's happening on the 19th and 20th of March. Do check out the website for more details and the fees as well. Mr. Yap, why 68 strategies? Yeah, that's why. Why not 70? Why not 84? 68 is because when actually, when, as we actually go along the way, uh -huh. okay, I try to just synthesize Mm -hmm. you know, there are so much, so many books for us to read. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm going to find is that what is the optimum number of strategy that we need to know? Mm -hmm. Not too many, mm -hmm. but too, not too little. Mm -hmm. So we have name 68, it will be just enough for you to keep track, mm -hmm. master and know where do you set. Wow, you mm -hmm. can be a master with 68 steps. Huh? Yeah. So if I read your book, I'll be just as good as you? Uh, not the book. Uh, have not come out with a book on the six eight strategies. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So now only the six eight strategy is only in the, only in the yeah. form of the workshop. I see. Yes. I see. So the book is still in the making. Very good. Very good. All right. Yeah. So thank we'll you very much, Mister. Yeah, of course, we'll see you again <laughs> next week. Once yes. again, that address. If you'd like to look up information on what Mister. Yap has just talked about, mm -hmm. the address is www.yapminghui.com. All right. We're gonna take another.